The ocean has always been a source of mystery and wonder, but also home to some of the most terrifying discoveries that have left even the most experienced scientists chilled with fear. I'm Taylor, your casual crypt keeper, and boy do I have something for you today. From deadly creatures lurking in the depths to unexplained underwater findings, join us as we dive into the top 5 most bone chilling ocean discoveries that still haunt scientists to this day. Let me know down below what scares you most deep beneath the ocean waves. Number 5. Siphonophores Now, what you're looking at right now definitely looks alien. It looks like something out of one of the Avatar movies. It looks like a giant sea serpent, right? What it actually is, is one long organism made up of countless individual creatures joined together called siphonophores. Now, siphonophores are some of the weirdest and most fascinating creatures in the ocean. They're a type of, like, colony. They're a living colony that consists of multiple individual creatures called zooids. Each one has their own specialized function and they all work together. From their appearance and behavior, there's not really a lot of things like siphonophores out there. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, but they all share a basic structural design. They consist of a long, slender stem, or like a stalk, with multiple branches or tentacles coming out of it. Each of these branches or tentacles is actually an individual little zooid, specialized for a particular task like feeding, swimming, or reproduction. Oh, everybody's jealous of the reproductive zooids. <laughs> Always a feeder. One of the most Interesting aspects of them though is how they eat actually. They're active predators and they use those long tentacles to capture small fish and like plankton and stuff. However, unlike a lot of predators, siphonophores don't just use their tentacles to capture their prey. What they do is they use these stinging cells called nematocysts, which are located on the surface of their tentacles to paralyze their prey. And once their prey is immobilized, tentacles coil around and bring it to the siphonophore's mouth, which is located at the base of the tentacles. And yep, you are definitely going to be thinking about that tonight when you try to go to sleep. Now, despite all these cool things I have told you, there's still so much we don't know about them because they're largely a mystery. They're difficult to study and understand, mostly because they're really far down deep in the ocean where we can't get at, and they're also extremely fragile. But boy, are they weird. And if you're looking for more strange stories about horrors under the water, well, this is part two, so you already know we've got plenty of videos on that, and oh my god, if you like the Megalodon, we've got a video or two for you. But if you don't want stuff from the ocean, we got just about anything scary you could think of. Click on through and subscribe, and make sure you hit that bell and don't miss a scream. But, whew. Slow down there, buddy. Do that at the end of this video, okay? I got way more weird sea creatures for you. Number four, the immortal jellyfish. We're all born to die, are we not? That's what Lana Del Rey said, and I trust her more than anyone. Well, us humans, maybe. But some of us are built different, like the immortal jellyfish. The immortal jellyfish is a fascinating and downright eerie creature that's got the attention of scientists and the public alike. This thing is tiny, it's only about five millimeters inside, it's found all over the world, and it has an incredibly unique ability to regenerate its cells and reverse its aging process, effectively making it immortal. So far, this is the only creature that's been shown to prestige once it hits max level. It's a little joke for my modern warfare friends. This means that the immortal jellyfish can genuinely live forever as long as it doesn't fall prey to predators. Pretty good deal. While the idea of immortality sounds like a dream, I mean that's like what half of like all science fiction stories are about is trying to make yourself immortal, the immortal jellyfish has raised concerns about the impact of its population growth on ecosystems. Because these things technically have the potential to live forever, it's got the ability to reproduce rapidly and take over the habitats of other species, disrupting the balance of marine ecosystems. This could lead to an extinction of other species, and who knows what kind of ripples that would have on the food chain. And even though they're pretty small, I think an army of immortal jellyfish are actually kind of scary. Scientists are studying the creature's unique ability to regenerate its cells and hope that maybe they can unlock the secrets of human aging and potentially develop new treatments. This definitely has the possibility to benefit humanity in many ways. It sure would be awesome to live to like 300, but it also raises a ton of ethical questions and who knows what that kind of technology or research could look like in the wrong hands. If you've ever played the video game Bioshock, I feel like you should already know a thing or two about the dangers of harvesting undersea creatures for their DNA to inject into humans, it did not work well for anybody in Rapture. It was terrible there. So maybe it's best we leave those cells inside the jellyfish. 
Coming up next on the list is going to be the Baltic Sea Anomaly. It's a very strange, unexplained object that was discovered in 2011 at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. Now, this object is about 60 meters long and it's been described as a giant mushroom shaped stone, or maybe a crashed UFO, or some even think a sunken city. A UFO underwater. Does that make it an unexplained swimming object? A USO? Of course, there are some who think that the Baltic Sea anomaly could just be a natural formation formed from years of erosion, but that would be boring. Despite numerous attempts to study the anomaly and try and figure out just what it is, it remains a puzzle to scientists and a source of fascination. I mean, that's why we're still calling it the Baltic Sea anomaly, not the Baltic Sea we know what it is. Definitely the most scary thing about it is that it's completely shrouded in uncertainty. This thing was discovered by accident. You know, they weren't even looking for it. They were looking for shipwrecks and happened to find it. And since then, it has been the subject of constant speculation. Some, like I said before, believe that it could just be a natural formation, while others argue that this could be a shining piece of evidence towards an ancient civilization or even extraterrestrial life. There are some as well who are concerned that it could be a threat to the environment around it because there are some studies that have suggested that possibly the object could be leaking toxic chemicals or even, God forbid, radiation, which would have some pretty scary implications for the Baltic Sea and the people who live near its shores. As well, the fact that we know just like so little about this thing makes us wonder what could happen in the future. Could this be a Godzilla situation where this is a sleeping kaiju beneath the oceans that's going to come up and destroy a city? Probably not, but it could be. The Baltic Sea Anomaly, we may never find out a single thing about it. It's going to keep our imaginations going for years until we figure out just what it is. Who knows what dangers could be lurking. Could be nothing, but could be something. A reminder of how little we truly, truly know about what lies beneath the water. Number two, Sakoyam. What is the last thing you think you'd want to discover at the bottom of the ocean? Is it the Kraken? Cursed pirate treasure, a cavern full of misshapen skulls and bones. It's the last one. That's the only real one out of the three because that's our next point. This underwater cavern in particular, one Sakoyam, is located in the Yucatan. It's a sea note, and a sea note is a natural pit from the collapse of limestone bedrock that exposes groundwater underneath. And the Mayans sometimes used to use sea notes as places to perform like a little bit of human sacrifice, like just a little bit, like a teeny tiny little bit of human sacrifice. This sea note sits outside the ruins of the ancient Mayan city of Mayapan, south of the capital of Yucatan. It was a major political center from the 12th to 15th century and contained within its stone walls a secret Mayan city. Now there were around 40 sea notes which served as water sources for the residents and a pretty convenient place to store the misshapen bones of your human sacrifices. Legend says that this particular sea note is noteworthy for being guarded by a feathered horse-headed serpent. And when researchers dove in, they discovered there were very real reasons to be afraid. Bones scattered across the sea floors. 15 sets of bones marked by 15 bizarrely elongated skulls. These skulls were flattened during infancy. Um, why the Mayans did this is a bit puzzling to researchers and, and me. Uh, I don't know how much you know about like anatomy and biology, but traditionally, this skull works best when it's not flattened. Now, interestingly, researchers believe that these people weren't sacrificed, but rather their bones were laid to rest here to get closer to the underworld as they await the next cycle of rebirth. I only hope we didn't disturb them. I don't want to wake someone up while they're sleeping. And number one, the Yonaguni Monument. Now, you've definitely heard of the lost city of Atlantis, this mythical city that could have been signs of an ancient technologically advanced civilization that people believe sunk. But have you ever heard of the Yonaguni Monument? It's been called the Japanese Atlantis. It's a mysterious structure found off the coast of Japan that's quite puzzled with scientists and researchers for decades. Some argue that it was crafted by an ancient civilization. Now, the monument itself is a sprawling complex of stone structures, steps, and platforms. And the most defining feature is this massive a pyramid that looms over it with precise angles and straight lines that make it seem like somebody engineered this thing 
rather than this thing just happened. It defies natural explanation. Many people believe that this monument was created by some unknown ancient civilization that's been completely lost to history. The design and precision of the stone suggests that it was crafted, crafted with care and skill, likely by a culture with technology a little more advanced than ours. If it's a conspiracy you prefer that aliens did it, then definitely it's a possibility that aliens built this thing. Now, others believe that the monument is simply a natural formation, and I can already hear you booing, that has been shaped by the forces of erosion and tectonic activity, as if you really believe in erosion. It's all a scam. They argue that the angles and straight lines are simply coincidental, and the monument is nothing more than a curious formation. Sure. That's plausible, but it does feel like a bit of a cop out, and I just don't buy it personally. I'm usually more of a skeptic than not, but I have trouble believing that erosion and the passage of time could create something so strongly looking like a lost city. It would just be a very big cosmic coincidence, is all I'm saying. Now we know so little about the monument, and perhaps we never will, and that's just what makes it so Interesting. So you let me know down below, what do you think the Yonaguni Monument is? Something from an ancient culture? Evidence of aliens on Earth long before us? Or just some rocks that happen to look like a temple? Well that's about all she wrote for this video, my ghouls and goblins. Thanks so much. Creep on creeping on, and I'll see you in the next one, so long as I don't get lost at sea.